Right now, Patrick, do you think that there's a major difference between private universities and public universities? Yes and no. I mean, the, the, there are three types of universities. There's public universities uh, that are state-funded um, and usually are very subsidized for students in the country in which those public universities operate. Uh, and that the private universities, and there's two kinds of private universities. There's not-for-profit and there's for-profit private in entities. The not-for-profit entities, um, universities, are really driven more by, by a mission, right? So they're not, they're not in it to make money. Uh, uh, they're driven by some vision that they're trying to achieve. And if they do make a, a surplus, they plow it back into, into education. And the for-profit, as, as you would understand, you know, they're, they're doing it to make money. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the, that's one basic difference. Um, the private universities will tend to be smaller than public universities, uh, partly because, you know, the state is a much bigger entity mm -hmm. than any set of individuals. Um, and they and as a result tend to be a little more limited in what they will do. You know, if you look ar around the world um, in terms of what the, the universities do, that's the case. But beyond those uh, basic differences, I think that public and private all have the same goal mm -hmm. of education, which is you're trying to develop this, your citizens, the citizens of a country, mm -hmm. um, to be more productive, uh, you're trying to uh, develop citizens to be more responsible to each other. You're trying to develop citizens and leaders who will create a society that's worth living in, yeah. <laughs> right? That's fit for human um, life. Yeah. Uh, that's really at the at, you know at at the end of it. That's what education is about. Yeah. Now, when we went around and did a bit of research on education, we found that some students, well, a lot of students in Ghana had issue also with funding um, right. to the university. And why, it, I know that Ashesi University, for instance, provides scholarship to right. their students. How did you come about getting scholarships for your students? I, just some background, I was able to go to Swarthmore because I got a scholarship to go. And if I hadn't had that scholarship, I wouldn't have been able to go to Swarthmore. So I went to this school, and there were people like me who were funded by this college, and there were people who were paying for their education, some of them paying a lot of money. Um, and I felt that, that that model was was a good one, because by having students who were paying for their education, you're able to get more financial resources to run a high-quality education. But by having a, a scholarship program, you're able to sort of even the playing field for people who, who don't have as, as much means. Uh, and that's what I've been committed to at, at, at Ashesi. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time uh, raising philanthropic money to, uh, to fund students who can't afford it. Yeah. Um, uh, and my wife and I have contributed ourselves uh, as well. It's something that's very important to me. It's sort of passing forward a benefit that I, that I gained. Yeah. And over the last uh, nine years, we have given over $2 million worth of scholarships to students in this country. Yeah. Um, but that's a contribution we're making to, to even uh, the playing field. Um, and give people opportunities that that we all really should have access to. Yeah. Now, education as a whole, I mean, you mentioned some difficulties that you saw. That's why you started Ashesi University. Right. And there's still ongoing issues, as we just saw from the story. What do you think, as a country in a whole, we need to do to, you know, further education, educating our people? I think that we need to we need to be lifelong learners. And we need to, as educators, we need to understand that we don't know it all. That there's, there are many institutions out there in the world that we can learn from. And we, sh we should do all we can to learn from, from everyone. Yeah. Uh, so institutions in Ghana that we can learn from, institutions on the continent of Africa, we can learn from institutions in Asia, um, and in the West that we can learn from. So that's number one. 
Number two, um, I think that there's there's an attitude and a mindset that needs to develop in Ghana mm -hmm. throughout society and throughout the leadership of this country, um, which is that anyone who is in a position of influence, of privilege, should not be concerned only with them about themselves. They should not be concerned only about their own children. They should be concerned about the children of Ghana. Yeah. And which means they should be concerned about the children of other people um, and their children. And I think if, you, if we have this mindset, then the way we operate changes, right? So it should be the case that corporate Ghana should be funding uh, scholarship programs for students who don't have the means to go to college. Yeah. It should be the case that the state um, has scholarship funds not only for students who go to state institutions but for students who go to private institutions. In other words, it should be possible for someone who lives in an impoverished rural village to get some state scholarship to go to a private university where a wealthier kid is going. Yeah. Yeah. That to me is compassion that to me is sort of giving everyone the same opportunities. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to take everyone it is. <laughs> to, to get this thing to work. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I now understand why apparently as going around and getting research, if someone comes in with a resume from just any university and then someone comes in with a, a resume from Ashes University, they pick that person. And I now understand why because they're all rounded people. They're leaders of the community. So um, thank you very much for this, um, you know, giving to the community the way that you have as well. And we've learned a lot today from Dr. Ewa. Let's take a break and we'll be back shortly.